Hello community, today I will teach you how to be villains. First and foremost, I know the people watching this will have all types of different expertise when it comes to the game, from level 10 to level 1000, so I'll try my best to give advice that is useful to both. Hitman's maps are basically your entire playground. If you're playing Hitman, you're playing a certain map, which is why it's very important to learn them and get good at them. And you may ask, well, there's 22 maps on the entire trilogy, how am I supposed to learn all that? Well, actually, you only need to know specific information about them to be good at them. You don't need to know every little corner and guard position. You eventually will learn all those things, but first, what you need to do is find the strongest disguise for every map. Now, there is two types of maps. The Hitman 3 maps like Mendoza, Dubai, Berlin and etc. will have a single disguise that rules all. The Head of Security for Mendoza, the Penthouse Guard for Dubai, Rolf Hirsch Müller in Berlin. These disguises will give you access pretty much everywhere on the map, allowing you to explore easily and take care of your targets with little to no risk as well as complete challenges and explore different mission stories that will passively give you all the knowledge you need about the map's layout. However, not all maps are created equal. The second types are maps like Mumbai, Santa Fortuna and Wilton Creek. These maps are split in sections, so you need different disguises to be able to go through these particular sectors and take down the targets in them. Once you feel it's too easy moving through the map and taking care of business, then it's time to switch to suit only. Now, although playing with disguises will teach you the overall layout of the map, it's suit only that will teach you how to maneuver that map, where you can and can't go. It will allow you to challenge yourself and see what types of ways you can assassinate your targets while maintaining both suit only and sound assassin. However, we are not done with the maps, no, 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 we're far from it. Learning the strongest disguise is only part of the process. Another extremely important thing is knowing where to find useful items. For me personally, those useful items would be lethal slash emetic poison, giving you the chance to set up a kill and then move freely, a crowbar for both unlocking almost every door and giving you a non-lethal melee, a non-lethal melee is very important, it will make pacifying people much quicker and quieter and you won't need to worry about a lockpick if you're playing freelancer or just don't have space for it. Also a car battery, it's a very useful tool, it will allow you to set up both electrocution and fire kill. And here's a little trick about using it. If you throw it, often a guard or NPC may hear it when they come investigate, they will get electrocuted, which is not the desired outcome when you've planned it for someone else. However, if you place it or drop it instead of throwing it, you can then shoot it with a silenced pistol to activate it silently. And the best part is, if you were able to place it near the edge, you can now safely pick it up and the effects will remain in the puddle. Meaning that now the water will stay electrified on its own and you can use the car battery again for another target. Right here, I put down the car battery and a coin to lure my target into this pre-shot oil canister. And when my target comes, a single bullet to the battery gives me a free fire kill. And now, if we make our way back to the construction yard, you will find our previous target is making his way over there and it's about to be electrocuted. And as you can see, no taser or car battery is present. The water remained electrified and we got two kills for the price of one. Next very important item is of course a propane flask, an extremely useful item that is basically a free accident kill. You can throw it and then trigger it when the target is near with both a bullet, a taser, a breaching charge, an EMP, or the big one distraction you unlock from the IOS gill. And finally, learning the location of the camera evidence. This will change from map to map. In Sapienza there are four, in Dartmoor there are zero, so you will have to be mindful of that. Also, not every map will give you the chance to get rid of the evidence. Some maps like Bangkok and Marrakesh, it's almost impossible, so you better not get caught by a camera there. Here is an overall look of Mumbai. These are my main places where I find these items. Of course, there is more than one car battery, more than one crowbar, but these are the main ones that I tend to pick up because they fit my routes. Yours may differ, but these five things will be available in almost every single map, so it's very important to know their location. Don't worry if you're struggling at first, you can always visit Hitman Maps, which will show you all of the locations of the items you may need. However, that's for the items you can find in the levels themselves. Outside of that, you'll have to become proficient at the weapons you unlock. 
Starting out with arguably the strongest weapons in the game, we have the Tranquilizer and Seeker. The first thing you will notice when you get your hands on them is that they aren't that easy to shoot. So here's my tip on them. For shooting idle NPCs, I like to adjust the lowest part of the crosshair right above their head and move it up and down depending on the distance. You want to shoot at the center of their body, that way the dart will hit them in the widest area, otherwise it may fling right behind their ear or in front of their nose. So even if you had the right height, you may have missed the width, so try to aim at the center. Also, for moving targets, you want to shoot slightly in front of them. Not much, just ever so slightly in front so you're able to hit them. Another cool thing about tranquilizers is if you have two guards standing together and you shoot one of them, the other guard will lose his enforcer status as soon as he notices his friend fall asleep. So he won't be able to spot you and you can run right by him, no problem. Once you're comfortable going through missions with the strongest disguise, then it's time to switch to suit only. Once you're comfortable with suit only and strongest equipment, it's time to try playing suit only with default loadout. And finally, once you're capable of taking on a map with both suit only and default loadout, that's when you should start thinking about elusive targets, contracts, escalations and freelancer. All of these modes will put you in a position where you'll have to think quick on your feet. You won't be able to make any saves, so you'll have to take risks. You have to basically show up to a map with no idea of how to deal with your targets and somehow find a way to do it. It's the ultimate test of sink or swim. Can you put all of your knowledge together to find a way to beat the targets? Or will you sink under the pressure? There's only one way to find out, but I can give you some tips to help you out. First off, in the options menu, there are three options I would highly advise you to turn on. First, the camera shoulder swap. This is a very useful feature that wasn't available at first, but due to popular demand, made a return in Hitman 3. It is a very useful tool, it will allow you to switch your perspective depending on your environment. Another one I would highly recommend is the Silent Assassin Tracker. It will tell you when you've been caught by a camera, and if for some reason you were to lose Silent Assassin, for no reason or whatever, which happens from time to time, you would be aware of it. It's a very useful feature that doesn't distract too much, it's more good than bad, trust me. And finally, I would recommend you to switch your mission timer on. This is an extremely useful feature for so many reasons. First off, all of your targets have certain loops. A lot of times those loops are based on time. If you're able to determine that let's say Vanya Shah goes to the pool area at around 1 minute 40, then you know how much time you have to catch her and take her down in the easiest way. If you haven't had a timer before, then you may think it's not that big of a deal, but honestly, it's a huge deal. Once I turned it on, way back, I can't imagine playing Hitman without it. I'm not even a speedrunner, it's just such a useful feature that anybody can benefit from it. Now, here's some tips and tricks that the game doesn't tell you. First off, bullet distractions. The idea is simple, you shoot somewhere close by an NPC, where they can hear it and they'll go to check that location. The trick is to be able to judge distance correctly and shoot close enough for them to hear it, but not freak out. I recommend you to wait a full second after shooting before you shoot again, because a lot of times NPCs won't get a question mark over their head and instead will slowly turn around to look at the location of the shot and walk to it. And if you were to shoot twice, they would freak out, which is good if you just want to run through the area without worrying about being spotted, but bad if you have to remain in the area, as now they will start searching and causing panic. Bullet distractions are mainly to be used when you're out of coins or enough distance away that you don't really need to worry about freaking them out. It works great for Sniper Assassin if you know what you're doing. Depending on the pistol, the distance they can hear will differ. The Krugamar is a perfect pistol for them as it's subsonic, making it very unlikely to result in panic. Next up is something I like to call the bump. It's perfect to use anytime you have to stop someone from moving. It's particularly useful when you have a target with two bodyguards walking besides one another. You can just crouch bump one of them to slow them down and take them out, then proceed to do the same to the other one and finally take down your target. It can be done suit only, no problem, it will work on practically any NPC as long as you don't do it with too much speed. Now I'm sure everyone watching this video knows what a coin lure is. You place a coin on the ground and the NPC that sees it comes to pick it up. You can use it to lure targets halfway across the map if you want to. However, you can do something very similar with a body lure. When your target sees an unconscious body, they will freak out and go investigate. Then all you need to do is follow them there and take them out. 
It is similar to a peekaboo technique, it works great with a tranquilizer as it minimizes risk. Talk about the peekaboo technique, it's really simple, you just stand in front of an NPC in a trespassing area and when the yellow bar fills over 60%, they should come investigate the location you are currently standing in. This will only work for suit only players and it will only work on enforcers. Not every NPC in a trespassing area is an enforcer, Darwood Rangan is a prime example. The good thing about this particular strategy is that the target comes directly where you want them with no equipment necessary. A lot of times targets won't react to coin distractions, instead sending one of their guards to check it out. But with this strategy, they come directly to your location. Most of the time they'll do it alone, but in rare times where a guard would follow them there, a simple non-lethal melee will take them down, leaving you and the target completely isolated. And finally, we have something I call knee capping, though it doesn't have to be in the knees. The way it works is by shooting a non-guard NPC in the leg or other non-lethal area to cause a panic. What this will do is panic all of the NPCs in that room, allowing you to move freely and perform illegal actions while keeping Silent Assassin. Do remember that this will work if there is no guard present and as long as you don't get caught shooting. It is a very easy strategy that will allow you to take care of business much quicker as you see. I was able to shoot only take the birthday challenge in no time at all and kept Silent Assassin the whole way. One word of advice I would give for this strategy is to not rush in as soon as you make the shot. You want to give a second or two for the NPCs to all get panicked and then run in and do the deeds. With that, we've come to the end of the video. If you enjoyed, press the like button, subscribe for more content and more than anything else, thank you very much for watching.